everyone and welcome uh, to the second part of this lecture about the digestive system. So now we are going to uh, look at the process of digestion and we are going to look specifically at the process of secretion. Uh, so we are going to look at the secretion of the hydrochloric acid, which is uh, fundamental for the degradation of the food uh, and also for uh, the pepsin to act on the degradation of proteins and the digestion of proteins and also the secretion of uh, mucus uh, and uh, bicarbonate as well for the protection of the um, digestive tract endothelium. So this is a complicated process and there are many uh, processes and cells involved in this. So let's go step by step. Uh, so imagine again that we go back to the previous schematic and we look at the um, uh, digestive tract epithelium uh, where we have the circular folds. Uh, so let's have a deeper look at those, okay? So in uh, the uh, walls of the digestive tract, uh, we have uh, different types of cells. Okay, so the first cell that we are going to uh, see here are the D cells. So remember that the cells have this belly, uh, villi, uh, which are going to increase the surface area for absorption of nutrients. And then, so here we have these D cells. Another important cell type uh, here, uh, which is really, really important for the process of digestion and secretion, are the parietal cells. Then we are going to have the ECL cells. So these have a very complicated name, uh, so that's why I'm calling them ECL. So ECL stands for enterochromaffin-like cells. You don't need to learn that word for the exam, just ECL cells. Then we have uh, the G cells. And finally, we have uh, a cell type uh, with a very important name, which are the gastric uh, chief cells. Okay, so as we uh, saw before, the endothelium of the stomach is also characterized because it's highly innervated and we have this enteric system and this uh, regulation also from the social nervous system, right? So, uh, and we have uh, the different plexus, the submucosal plexus and also the myenteric plexus. So uh, let's say that here we have those neurons. So we have the neurons for the parasympathetic nervous system. So these uh, nervous of the these cells of the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, when they are activated, they are going to secrete acetylcholine. So this uh, acetylcholine is going to be very important, uh, first of all, for the activation of the parietal cells. So the acetylcholine is going to bind here to the acetylcholine uh, receptors here of the parietal cells. And in that response, the parietal cells are going to get activated and they are going to secrete a very important uh, component, a very important chemical for the digestion, the chemical digestion, which is the hydrochloric acid. So when we secrete a hydrochloric acid, we are going to increase uh, the acidity. So we are going to increase the protons and the acidity. And by increasing the acidity and the number of protons, we are going to lower the pH. Okay. So uh, this HCl is really important for the digestion. Uh, we are going to look at it in a second. Uh, but this acetylcholine is not only going to act on the parietal cells, it's also going to act on the ECL cells. 
So it's going to bind to the ECL cells and these ECL cells are going to get activated and they are going to secrete uh, another uh, hormone. So they are going to secrete histamine. So this histamine is also going to activate the parietal cells and again is going to increase the secretion of hydrochloric acid uh, to uh, lower further the pH. But also <laughs> this acetylcholine is also going to activate these other cells which are the G cells. So through the activation of the G cells and the binding to the G cells through the acetylcholine uh, receptors, these G cells they are going to secrete another hormone that is uh, called the gastrin. So this gastrin is uh, going to activate the ECL cells, so they produce more histamine for the activation of the parietal cells and the uh, uh, secretion of hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid is uh, really important uh, because the hydrochloric uh, acid uh, is going to convert uh, pepsinogen into pepsin. The, um, this decrease uh, in pH is going to have an effect on the gastric chip cells. And these cells are really important uh, because they are going to secrete here pepsinogen. So the HCL is really important for the conversion of pepsinogen into pepsin. And pepsin is the hormone that it's, uh, or the enzyme, sorry, that it's going to degrade uh, the proteins in our body into amino acids. So this is going to be essential for digestion here. So also, uh, so we have seen here the activation with the acetylcholine, the gastrin, the histamine, uh, uh, hydrochloric acid, and then the conversion of pepsinogen to pepsin. But this at some point needs to uh, stop as well, right? So at the same time, uh, this increase in acidity and this lower in the pH, so the increase in protons is going to act on the D cells. So these D cells, they are going to secrete another hormone that is called uh, somatostatin. So this hormone is going to inhibit of this process uh, for the inhibition of the secretion of, of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we have looked at the secretion of the hydrochloric acid, but our stomach or the digestive tract also uh, secrete uh, other different types of uh, components. So for example, um, uh, our digestive tract is going to, uh, is going to uh, here secrete uh, water. Also is going to secrete mucin, which is uh, very important because uh, this is why it's called the mucus layer. Uh, mucin is going to form the mucus that is going to cover uh, here uh, the uh, epithelium of the, of the digestive tract and is going to facilitate the smooth uh, movement of the aliments, right? And then finally, very important as well for this protective layer of mucin, we have the bicarbonate. So this mucin and bicarbonate, they are for, going to form here a protective layer on top of the epithelium. And this protective layer is going to protect the epithelium from the action of the protons and the hydrochloric acid. So uh, this um, hydrochloric acid, uh, this uh, acidity doesn't damage the cells uh, here of the digestive tract. Uh, this is also very important for uh, different uh, clinical disorders uh, because like a small break here in this protective layer of mucin and bicarbonate uh, can cause uh, a lot of injuries and disruption of uh, the epithelium and all the different uh, cell system here in the digestive tract. Okay, so with this lecture, we are uh, done for today. I hope that you enjoy my explanation of the digestive system. I'll see you next week. Thank you.